Hello, welcome to this IPA grammar lesson on phrases and clauses. All right. Let's let's jump right in here and get started, okay? So first of all, let's talk about clauses. What is a clause? A clause is a group of words which contains both both a subject and a simple predicate or a verb. Okay, so it has a subject, it has a verb. It does not need to express a complete thought, although some of them do express complete thoughts. Okay, some clauses do express complete thoughts, but they don't need to. Okay. Let's take a look at some examples here. He ran past. Does it have a verb? Yes, it does. Ran. Who's doing the running? He's doing the running, so it also has a subject. He ran past. And it also expresses a complete thought. So if you put a full stop here, a period right here, um, that could actually act as a complete sentence. But it is a clause because it has all of the requirements of a clause. They swam at the beach. Swam is the verb. They. They is the subject. So they swam at the beach. Again, it's a clause. It contains everything that it needs. When he stopped. When he stopped. Has a verb. Stopped. It does have a subject. He. Uh, now, this one does not express a complete thought. However, it does have both a subject uh, and a verb. So it is a clause, although it cannot act as a complete sentence. All right. Now, phrases. Phrases are different from clauses in that uh, a phrase is a group of words which does not have either a subject or a verb, simple predicate. See? An example, the large man. The large man. Well, we don't have a verb here. Okay. At the cinema. Once again, we don't have a verb, so we know it's a phrase and not a clause. After school. After school. Um, we have a preposition after, but we don't have uh, the verb. So again, that's a phrase. Now, phrases can act as uh, parts of speech in a sentence. Okay. But... Um, they they do not have the same function as um, as a clause, all right, because they don't have the same uh, criteria requirements. Okay, let's take a look here. Are these phrases or are these clauses? The ugly beast. The ugly beast. Well, does it have a verb? No, it does not. So we know right away that this is a phrase. Destroyed the house. Destroyed the house. What did the destroying? We don't know. Okay, so as a verb, destroyed, but we don't have a subject. We don't know what did the destroying. Inside the treehouse. Inside the treehouse. Hmm. Once again, we don't have a verb, so we know it's not a clause. It is a phrase. A man slept. Do we have a verb? Yes, we do. Slept. Okay. Do we have a subject? Who did the sleeping? The man did the sleeping. So we know that's a clause. It has both a verb and a subject. Now, there are two types of clauses, and you have to be able to distinguish between the two types. First of all, we have independent clauses. Uh, they express a complete thought, and they can act alone as a complete sentence. Then there are dependent clauses. Well, they do contain both a subject and a verb. They do not express a complete thought. Okay, so both dependent and independent clauses have both a verb and a subject, but only independent clauses uh, may act as a complete sentence, okay? Because only independent clauses express a complete thought. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Uh, which of these groups of words are independent clauses and which are dependent clauses? All right, Spider-Man jumped. Spider-Man jumped. Hmm. Well, we have a verb, jumped, and we have a subject. Spider-Man. And is that a complete thought? Well, actually it is. We can put a full stop right here, a period right here, Spider-Man jump, and that would be a complete sentence, expresses a complete thought. When I think too much, when I think too much, hmm, all right, does it have a verb? Yes, think. Does it have a subject? I, yes. Does it express a complete thought? No, it does not. When I think too much, what? What happens? I don't know. Okay, so the whole, the full sentence might be, when I think too much, uh, I get headaches. When I think too much, I get headaches. And I get headaches, that 
Um, that's an independent clause. Okay, I get headaches. Can that expresses a complete thought? It can act as a full sentence, but just this part when I think too much. Okay, that is a dependent clause. Depends on an independent clause uh, in order to form a complete sentence. So once again, it can be when I think too much, I get headaches. When I think too much, dependent clause. I get headaches, independent clause. Okay. So what I want you to do is uh, write down these next three examples, and I want you to determine whether they are independent clauses or dependent clauses and why. Okay, and that's it for this lesson. Thank you for listening.